Hello, my name is Harold Smith from Marset. Today we're going to have a brief discussion about the history of feeding fats to dairy cows and where these fats come from and different types of fats. The brief history is that in the 1920s, the first university study was done to try to find the effect of why certain oil seeds when fed to dairy cattle caused a decrease in butter fat. Most dairy diets at that time and up until the early 60s required little added fat due to the relative low milk production and most energy needs were met by grass and forages and additional grain. The modernization of dairy farms and the phenomenal genetic improvement of dairy cattle that happened in the last 50 years has caused the need for energy dense rations to be fed cows. Early work was done by feeding vegetable fats and tallows but as we know now many of these would be unsaturated fats and often had a severe effect on low butter fat production. Research begin to show that saturated fats such as palmitic and oleic have the most benefit on milk production. Most of the fats we use today come from palm oil production. Oil palm trees were first cultivated in West Africa over 5,000 years ago. Palm oil was so highly regarded it was found in the tombs of the pharaohs. Oil palm trees were brought to tropical Southeast Asia by the Dutch and English during colonization. Oil palm trees are a tropical fruit and must be grown in the equatorial zone. They require abundant sunlight and abundant rainfall. The first oil palm plantation in Indonesia was started in 1917. On the left is a picture of a seedling grove of pine oil palm trees. In the center would be a grove of trees that are less than a year old. The far right would be a mature grove of palm trees. Now these palm trees produce about 76 pounds of oil per tree per year. One acre of palm tree, oil palm trees, which is about 52 trees, will produce 10 times the oil of any other vegetable crop. These oil palm trees begin producing fruits in three and a half years and can produce up to 40 years of age. They grow to a height of 40 feet tall. On the left is a mature palm tree showing the fresh fruit bunches, which are called FFBs. These fruit bunches are way up in the tree. They're covered by thorns and are very difficult to harvest. They're harvested by individuals with long metal poles with razor sharp ends. They're cut off, they drop to the ground, they're picked up, and all of the fruits are picked up. This would be an example of a fresh palm fruit. The yellow mealy outside is where most of the products we come from. The golden white center would be the palm kernel. Now the palm kernel oil is the most valuable oil and it's used mainly for human food and cosmetics. Crude palm oil here is what comes from the fruits on the outside. Here you see a gentleman cutting the fresh fruit bunches out of the tree. It's a very labor intensive job. The bunches are loaded onto either trucks, wagons, or rail car. And they're transported to what be the Kroom Paul milling plant you see here. Now this would be one of the newer, more modern ones. These plants are fully self-sustaining after the first harvest, meaning that they produce their own energy. So the fresh fruit bunches are brought into the truck here and you would see them down here. They go through what's called a sterilization process, which just means they are superheated with steam to make them soft enough to tear the bunches apart. The stripped bunches are either used as fertilizer or they're used as cattle feed. It's called palm beet, palm paw, just like beet paw. From then, the two different parts of the fruit are cleaved apart. This part would be the palm fruit part. This would be the kernel. Now we're not concerned with the kernel because that does not come into play for the products we're gonna be used. So there's several different refining parts of getting the product purified. The cream paw oil is put into storage tanks like here, and then it is either transported by truck or ship to the refinery. Now we're only concerned about the crude palm oil. So the crude palm oil comes into the refining plant and the refining plant is much like a petroleum refining plant. It's where you cleave out the different fractions. So the physical refining, it's degumming, bleaching and deodorizing 
which yields two products on this side and the, all the waste would be the palm fatty acid distillates. And why are they important? Because palm fatty acid distillates are where all our calcium salts or calcium soaps of PFADs come from. A product like Energy Balancer 1000 is a calcium salt of palm fatty acid distillates. On this side, the RBD stearine, which is your refined bleached deodorized stearine, is where we get the products to make our high C16 products like Nobby Fat 80. Now there are many positives to palm oil production, especially if you're a poor person living in these equatorial zones. Palm oil is responsible for raising the number of people out of poverty, especially in a country like Indonesia. And the palm oil tree, they produce 35% of the world's vegetable oil on 10% of the land. So they are 10 times more productive than any other plant for producing oil. But there are far many negatives involved in palm oil production. The environmental impacts are quite severe. Indonesia has roughly about 60 million acres of palm oil trees now. And all of these would have been former rainforest or tropical forest. Now the tropical forests are bulldozed, burnt, and then planted with oil palm trees. The other biggest negative is the effect of wildlife. Many of the animals that live in there are sometimes near extinction or endangered. One positive now is that most palm oil producing companies are starting to have a more green outlook and working on sustainability. Palm trees can be planted anywhere near the equator all around the globe. A little further explanation of what is a calcium soap. Calcium soap is nothing more than soap. You can make a calcium soap or salt out of any fatty acid product, any oil. Now, one of the reasons why we use palm fatty acid distillates or PFADs is that they have a very well-known fatty acid profile. Generally about 50 to 55% is palmitic C16 and 35% is usually oleic. Now this is the chemical process for making any type of soap. And you can make a calcium salt, like I said before, out of any fat. So you put in the sodium hydroxide and water, makes a thermogenic reaction. Then you add in the calcium to solidify it. Then the product is cooled, broken apart, and then packed up for us to use in our dairy cattle. Other dairy, dietary fats from palm oil on the left would be your free fatty acid products, which are 99 or higher of free fatty acids usually contain 80 to 90 percent C16 and the oleic is about five to seven. And this would be products like Navi fat, Berga fat, Jeffo fat. There are also some palm oil products that have triglycerides. Now they will show 99 percent fat but the amount of free fatty acid will be much lower. So they are fatty acid molecules held together by a glycerin molecule. Now the glycerin will break off in the rumen and can cause milk fat depression and other biohydrogenation, which can lead to milk fat depression and poor fiber digestion. Now there are some hybrid products out there, which are a mixture of PFADs and the free fatty acid products. You can get the same type of fatty acid profile while mixing Nobby Fat 80 and Energy Balancer 1000 4 to 1. One of the bright things we're seeing now is some high oleic soybeans, which are feeding extremely well to dairies in the mid-Atlantic. So in the future, we'll be looking at what is the ideal fatty acid profile as our friends in manufacturing in Southeast Asia are working on the ability to craft free fatty acid products for us. So here's just a list of some of the products. 
Thank you very much for listening. Bye.